And our first guest uh, this morning is Mr. Alan Flowers. He's the chairman of the Anglo-Belarusian uh, Society. Uh, sir, pleasure to have you with us as always. All right, so huge investments announced uh, yesterday uh, by the Polish government uh, on the eastern border of Poland with Belarus and as well as Kaliningrad. Uh, it's uh, Poland's border with Russia. Now, this has been dubbed the East Shield, and it's described as the largest defense operation on Poland's eastern border and NATO's eastern flank since 1945. I wonder if you could start a little bit. Uh, have there been any reactions in Belarus uh, to this announcement, either from the leadership or from commentators in the media? Well, the, the announcements have been only relatively recently made, and of course we're, we're right on the news story, and it's uh, very interesting you're leading um, with, um, of course, not only the tragic events that were happening on the border with the attack of the Polish border guard through the through the fence through what seemed to be a gap in the fence but also of course the the announcements that are um defense and this is more military defense oriented to two somewhat slightly separate things the migration problem and and the defense problem um i mean the reaction uh, as regards the the defense one amongst uh, um the what we would call the freer belarusians the ones i'm able to uh, contact um easily uh is 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 one of um, no no surprise whatsoever uh poland has been calling out the threat a potential military threat for for years of uh of of russia and belarus uh working together um lithuania also by the way has been calling that out because they see the the trains that are passing through lithuania um reinforcing and arming Kaliningrad, um, and in particular, uh, uh, Poland is all too aware of this gap known as the Suwalki gap between uh, Belarus and uh, Kaliningrad. Um, that is, is is clearly the, the the danger point and touch point. That uh, uh, if if there was actually any military action to occur, any border incursion, um, that would be the most logical and unlikely area. Um, so we, we, Poland moved very rapidly on the migration question when the first major threat was 2021. Um, there was a length of wall about 180 kilometers that it is covering the, the forest and land area. There's a lot of river, uh, something about similar length is actually river, the river Pug. So it's, it's now, a, from the point of view of migration, it's, it's a very well defended border. And we're seeing a nice view of, of that there. Um, uh, but from a military point of view, that that's another question. And uh, forearmed is is forewarned, and uh, this is uh, Europe's uh, part of Europe's eastern border. Of course, it runs down through Ukraine, and I un understand it's a very comprehensive, large-scale proposal um, covering not only the Belarus border but uh, Ukraine border, and obviously questions what's happening along the the Baltics as as well. And in fact, now uh, Polish um, Deputy Prime Minister and Defence Minister Władysław Kosiniak Kamysz, um, he emphasised also, like you mentioned, the strategic importance of the East Shield, which of course aims to enhance now, Poland's defence capabilities um, by focusing on advanced technology, monitoring systems by air. We are talking about barriers and fortifications. But having in mind um, the fact that Poland is facing hybrid warfare here, um, how do you think, and given the historical context, how do you think does the Shield East compare to previous board of defence um, initiatives? Well, well the, again, we've got to sort this um, defence uh, issue into two different categories. There is defence against the, the migrants, which, uh, of course, we know Mr Lukashenko's um, regime is for facilitating. Um, I mean that's so self-evident. The very fact that uh, uh, the, the 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 border could be penetrated right up to the Polish wall, and it appears that the Belarus authorities were taking no action there. Um, now, in that respect, Poland, um, under the threats that took place and were absolutely manifest 
in large scale. Thousands and thousands of migrants at the border in uh, 2021. October 2021 was a peak month when I think they were reaching over 10,000. The number of sightings and attempted crossings is 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 in the 10 to 20,000 range in the in the peak months and 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 of course the detections continue um, but the, with the new border fortification so Poland's done very well in in, in that front and the history of, of protection along the border is relatively um is relatively recent we have to remember that uh, that's the old uh, border between the Soviet Union the USSR and and Poland, but Poland was in USSR sphere of influence, so you virtually could just wander down tracks and uh, across between um, what was then pre-92, the uh, former Soviet Socialist Republic of Belarus, yeah? um, pre-92 terminology. Um, that I was there a lot in Belarus and at that border, I used to cross from Grodno to Belostok on the train that ran, ran down to Kuznetsa there. Um, a very, very uh, easy open border. Uh, of course, there's a significant section of 180 kilometers that's this river, um, but the rest, there's there's forest. Uh, the bison in Soviet times used to quite happily wander back and forwards with all sorts of apocryphal stories about the Belarusian male bisons going over to meet the attractive Polish bisons. Um, only recently have we seen this defense, and now uh, this is clearly a very major statement that the defense is moving um, having dealt with the migration point we are now seeing uh, the plans and the statements about military defense and that is an entirely different thing uh, uh, people old enough uh, to have at least studied a bit of second world war history know that europe's been this way before with france having to put up a very substantial defensive border on the maginot line well we all know what happened to that so um uh, this this will will give a, a tripwire trigger warning, and uh, uh, c c clearly the feeling is that uh, uh, not just the statement that there is there is NATO uh, behind that border, but there's clearly a decision that uh, something somewhat more physical needs to be planned over the next few years. Um, we we've, we've got some time. Mr. Putin's hands are well tied at the moment, but I think this is. Uh, uh, being seen in uh, Belarusian free Belarus circles, as you point out, those who are, I speak a lot to the di diaspora here, um, they ver very much seen as a very unfortunate, necessary, uh, the defensive move in these present times. Of, of course, if uh, if Mr. Lukashenko should go. Um, the uh, opposition that is attempting to take power and was believed to have been uh, is well known to have been elected essentially in 2020 that's a very pro-European pro-EU uh, op opposition uh, wants to be friendly of both borders of course they, they would seek uh, a rapport with a, a newly uh, revised form of Russia as well as EU not necessarily a, a move to EU membership but certainly friendly relations. So let, let's hope that these plans uh, will never really need to be enacted in full because the sooner Mr. Lukashenko goes and a, and a design um, oriented government who seeks friendship on all borders uh, is installed in Minsk, then the better for all. It would be better for all. Um, uh, the Telegraph actually called this uh, the new Iron Curtain. Um, uh, interesting take uh, on, on this uh, Polish initiative. Um, we will take a look also uh, at Ukraine's reaction to this because uh, it's not uh, it's not all uh, black and white here. Um, all right, Mr. Flowers, always a pleasure speaking with you. Thanks so much for joining us this morning.